Oh yeah, Dave says let's get this show on the road. I know. Um, <laughs> it's been a lot longer than you know. Step number one. Jack the truck up. Look, I even use wheel chocks. Uh, do I need to tell you to use jack stands? Yeah, use jack stands. Take the wheel off in your preferred wheel removal method. Then, get some nice weather. Maybe not. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Music check. Beer check. Let's get this show on the road, dudes. Yeah, okay. A little awkward. Sorry. Yeah, I got a couple of mounts. And I hope the uh, music's not too loud. If it is, I guess I can just do a voiceover. Alright. Break drum. Look at that. Yeah. Chances of getting off some to none. That's okay. Because automotive engineers thought of this. And they give you these little threaded holes here that you can uh, run an M8 by 125 bolt into to assist you. I have air. Oh, oh no, that's right. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is going to get loud. Sorry. And the phone is right, right by this. Sorry. All you do is just drive them in. You can see the drum coming off. Shazam! I think I'm all the way off. Oh, and an air compressor too. There you go. Hmm. Yeah, thanks to uh, Movie Magic. Fucking. Uh, <laughs> I got a drain pan. I'd recommend. Uh, a little bit of brake cleaner, just to get the stuff off. You can see the difference it makes. A little bit of dust. I mean, it's not necessary. A little pain underneath the clean the shiz up. All right. Uh, I think I was channeling a little Bob Ross there. All right. These things right here, it has springs behind them if you can't see them. Pen goes through the back. This tool right here. Press in. You can see they're slotted for removal. See the little slot? Oop. Yeah. See the little slot right there? Yeah. And the pen matches it. Ta da! I am actually going to hold on to these parts because you never know. Um, in my experience, the aftermarket kind of blows sometimes. Same thing on the other side. Here. And I got some springs. All right. All right. I, in all honesty, you just, I mean, just have at it. Uh, you might want to take a picture in case you ever have to put it back together. And, uh, yeah, it looks like I didn't. That's all right, I have video. Yeah, I'm going to have to start doing some cutting because otherwise I'm going to be rambling the entire time for you guys. I have to adjust the doohickey, the thing, the locker. Uh, I think there's a big spring up there. Yes, there is. If you don't have the right tools, uh, the brake tools, 
Uh, there are ways to do this. Seems like, yeah, we got some things going on down here. Come on. All right, we got some springs. More springs. The bell crank on one side, other half of the adjuster. And I have about one, two thousand miles on this. Sorry, I, in case you haven't noticed, I have never taken these apart before, so I'm just kind of I'm feeling around. You know, it happens. All right, I'm gonna pause it here because. I'm hoping if uh, you got this far, you can take apart brakes. So, um, that's it. I mean, really, you just saw what I did. It just came apart. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the wheel cylinder off. And uh, go from there. Alright, I'll be right back. Yep, yep, we're back. Okay, uh, I got the brakes apart. I had to fight a little bit. Um, All right, you'll see these little pins that are pressed into the shoes. They are lipped. So what happens is, um, actually this one's more lipped, isn't it? Um, that bell crank for the emergency brake goes down over this, and then there's like a horseshoe clip. They can be a mother to get off. Uh, best way I've found to do it is to spread it open with a screwdriver on the legs. Mm. And um, then just, Use like a pair of needle nose pliers or so, and then one side up on the pin, and the other side um, in front of the legs, and then just squeeze. Does that work all the time? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, which is why I fought with this. Uh, the other option, what I did was ended up bending up one of the legs, and was able to grab onto it with those pliers and uh, pull the pin off. All right, so we're down to the wheel cylinder. Real easy. You just got two bolts. That you're not going to be able to see because they're on the back side. Um, they're on the back side here, and then there's a, the line that goes right here where my line, my hand is tracing. 10 millimeter line wrench. If you don't have line wrenches, go get them because you will hate yourself uh, if you have a crappy pair of box wrenches and you try to loosen any of the lines up that we're going to be loosening up for this. Um, at the very least, use the line wrench to break it free. You can, after it's broken free, you can either do it by hand or with a regular old 10 millimeter Brock wrench. Okay, once the line is broken, brake fluid's going to come out. Oh no! Uh, these are, they're basically the Zerk fitting cut it, covers. Put this on the nipple on the brake line and um, you won't make quite as much of a mess. So, let's get to on brakes. Uh, 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 wheel cylindering this this thing, and um, so after that's the fun part. Um, all right, I'll be right back because I can't hold this and uh, do work. All right, wheel cylinder is off. I did forget to uh, say something about the emergency brake. See that hole in right here? Yeah, I keep thinking. And uh, so what happens is. This feeds through two uh, 10 millimeter head bolts. Go through there. Uh, all you do is just a uh, thread through here, or go through here and thread into here, and just undo them, and slide it out. And you can just set it aside for right now. Uh, the wheel cylinder, after you get the brake line out, you can bend it a little bit. It's gonna have to be bent later on anyway. Um, Another two 10 millimeter bolts, and uh, you are down to the backing plate. So, see right there? This is what uh, holds the backing plate on. Well, there's four of them. <laughs> you got two options here. You can do this if you want to save the backing plate and you don't mind doing the work, uh, you can pull the axle 
and uh, move it that way. Um, that will require axle seal and a bearing, I believe. I think there's a wheel bearing back in there. Um, yeah, we're not doing it that way. Um, it's just it's a lot of work. Um, I'm not sure, but you might have to open up the rear differential. There might be some locking clip in there that locks the axle into the differential. A lot of work. And then you know you got to buy fluid to to uh, fluid, and I don't know. There might be a gasket, um, at the very least RTV of some kind. Uh, put it all back together. Now, so what we're gonna do is we're going to get out the wizard wheel, and we're going to cut it. Probably. I don't know, I think I'm gonna V it, or not V it, but just maybe slot it from here to here. Yeah, that didn't work. I'm in between my two fingers here, and then hopefully I can uh, bend and tweak and get it off. And, um, and then we can start putting the new crap on. Alrighty. Uh, sorry I'm not actually filming this actually happening, but it's just, it's getting a little too hard to, um, Get, work around the camera and uh, do the work. But I'm doing the best I can. Um, this is the first side, so maybe on the second side I'll uh, once you know, maybe I'll just uh, film like crazy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, well, let's get the cutting. I like cutting. <laughs> oh wow, uh, that backing plate. Um, not fun. Probably the least favorite, least. Gosh, I'll, I'll see least favorite part of this. Okay, I've had a little experimentation, and I'm glad this wasn't on film. I have found that the, to pull the axle out is probably the easiest way. Um, once you undo those nuts in the back, they are 14 millimeter, I believe. Yeah, 14 millimeter uh, nuts, not bolts. Nuts on the back, that goes through here. Um, and you can see on the axle tube there where they go through. Axle pulls right out. Um, once you do that, you'll have the backing plate sitting right there and uh, four studs poking up through there. Knock the studs out. Uh, dead blow hammer, your best friend. <clears throat> After you do that, you can uh, you can leave the backing plate, which will be pressed up against the bearing housing here on the other side. Actually, you can knock that off. It might help a little bit to be able to turn stuff around. Um, and then you just cut it off. You're cutting off a pretty big piece, and I threw away uh, already to see how big. It is in the instructions on SOS's website. Um, cut out bigger than you need. I still had issues. Um, I did a combination of a sawzall and the cutoff wheel by my toe. Um, yeah, it's off. That's all I gotta say. When you're done, um, either cover, while you're cutting, cover this part here where the bearing is with a rag or something or you can do what I'm getting ready to do and blow it off and then uh, wipe off the axle shaft too. Um, I was wrong when I said earlier about like the other way to do this. It's not bad but you're going to need a press of some kind because this, this, this bearing here is pressed onto the shaft. So you're going to have to, you know, press the bearing off and then press it back on. Pro it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to just replace the freaking thing. Um, and then, you know, you can pretty much just undo the entire uh, backing plate and slide it off. Uh, up to you. Um, yeah, it wasn't fun doing this, but I did it and it's off. Uh, I definitely learned, learned from me. Take the axle out. There's just no way that you can do it with the axle sitting up there. I don't think you can hurt anything. Um, there's a seal up there. Just be careful. It's not very expensive. I think it's like eight bucks or something. Um, yeah. Now we're ready to put things together, man. Let's go to town. Well, this is going to be fun to uh, splice together. Um, yeah. So here's the backing plate off the passenger side. Um, post knocking the studs out with a dead blow hammer. I highly recommend that. Sorry, I'm nodding. And also, 
take the ABS sensor off the back of the, uh, the, the bearing housing when we're getting tired. Alright, the cuts. You can see I missed on one side. I would cut down in this section because this thing gets in the way. Cut down here to the hole. Cut down here to the hole. You'll see why when you start doing it. Once you get down pretty much to breaking the top arc of the, the hole, you should be able to start bending it at least with a dead blow hammer and then eventually with your hands. Once that does, the brake, slide off the axle, and you're done. Good. Um, I think that's uh, all I learned on the second side. You are going to need some uh, some uh, gear oil to go back in there. Um, I didn't lose any out of the other side for some reason, and then I pulled this side. Uh, it started coming out. I'm not sure how much, but it's something. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I guess it just gives me a chance to put some uh, synthetic in there. Uh, again, don't know how much. I'll get to that when I get to that. Oh, oh, I know. See this little O-ring right here? Be freaking careful. It's right there. Be careful. I broke it on the other side. I didn't do anything. It's just, it was uh, stuck to, I guess, the back of the bearing carrier, and uh, it tore. Uh, I cannot... I could probably find it locally if I figure out the dimensions of it, but I just finally ended up just getting it from the dealership. I don't have to screw around. But this other side, um... It was um, fine. I'm going to stick this axle back in and um, start the start the putting things together. Uh, hello. Yeah, oy vey. This is not fun. You thought that you were out of the out of the woods after you got the backing plate cut off. Oh hell to the no, man. Yeah, uh, getting this parking brake assembly on is no big fun. And now that I see it, I can, um, I can't even really show you anything. Let's see. Disregard the instructions on this. It says to put the rearmost shoe on before you even get the backing plate on. Um, I, I tried a few times, and then I finally just gave up. Um, so on the back, there is a, 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 a hold-down pin. It has like a dip in it, which isn't that big of a deal. Problem is, is the shoes, the, the, the hold down pin doesn't go into a hole, it goes into a notch. So what I found, the best way to do this, get the backing plate on, you can, you know, just drive. It takes, it's cut, there's a, there's a notch cut out of here in the bottom, so you don't have to do all the stuff to get it on there. Anyway, there's three... Uh, M10 bolts that are shorter in the kit and they go into the larger part of the backing plate as far as I can tell and then there's a shorter M10 bolt that goes into the, the fill, filler piece on the bottom. <clears throat> Here's the steps as much as I, best as I can remember. First thing is is you have these, these this green and the black spring up here. Um, at least for the back shoe it might be easier to Put it into the hole that's in the shoe. It's around there or so. One more thing to hold on to, but just bear with me. Um, then put the pin through for the back shoe. As far as I could tell, the dip faces forward, so it's like this, yeah, like this, yeah, like this. And the the bell crank for the the, the parking brake sits behind it as well. So it's the shoe and the, uh, the bell crank sit behind the, the, the hold down pin. I might have changed that later. This is, that's what I found looking on the internet. And it also seemed to work better. You put two washers on this end of the, the, the pen, run it through. Before you even put the shoe up there, run it through. Put the... Mm, You put that underneath this little piece, then the spring, then the, the cap, the little, 
the thing that I just dropped. That's the yellow circular spring that you put that in there. Okay? Then use your fingers, to like, you know, compress the spring and everything, and then slide the brake shoe in behind it. It works. You just have to watch when you're doing everything else to make sure it doesn't slide back out. I have the back one in. Um, use if you guys do not have the tool that I cannot find. Uh, let's grab some. I need me to grab onto it. Yeah, I'm on a roll, man. If you do not have this brake tool, get it. Because what you can do is you put the put it, it hooks into the little pin right here, and then you hook the circular part, the spring over there, and then you just lever it in. It'll make your life so much easier than trying to do it with needle nose vice grips or whatever the hell you're using. Trust me. Trust me on that. Spend the money, get the right tools. All right? So once you have that spring on there, you probably won't have to worry too much about this anymore. I, I say probably because you're going to be moving stuff around. Okay? Then you're going to do something similar for the front one. You're going to see, see the brake strut there with the purple spring on it that goes in between the shoes up there. Lay it in there. Just lay it in there, right? Then this spring, you can get into the hole on the front brake shoe after you slide it underneath the, 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 the hold down pin and the spring and everything. It's possible to do, or you can put it on there. Either way, um, I found it a little easier to do it afterwards only because it was one less thing trying to worry about that strut, the brake strut down there and everything else. Um, while trying to slide it underneath the, the spring and all that garbage, all right? Once you get the brake shoe slid in the holding pin, then you can put on the green spring. On the bottom, uh, you have your adjuster and you have this orange spring. In all honesty, I mean on normal brake pads, or normal uh, rear drum shoes, you have some kind of like I don't know, a plate on a spring that sits across the star wheel to keep it from backing out. So I'm not, I don't know if the spring is what keeps it from moving. I mean, it could definitely do it. I don't know. Um, so this is where I sit right now. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. Uh, the bolts on the back that hold the backing plate on, they're 17 millimeter heads. You can see uh, this, this, the parking, uh, the actual parking brake cable. That is also something you're going to want to put on before you slide the rear brake shoe under the hold down pin and spring and all that garbage. Um, there's like a little adapter barrel that goes on to the end of the, the OEM parking brake. That part's pretty easy. You can do it by hand, yada, yada, yada. Um, it goes through over there, and then it comes. The kit comes with two Allen head bolts that go through there to hold the parking brake in there. Now, in the instructions, it says to um, go inside the truck, pull the center console. There's an adjuster in there, a balancer, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, and undo that. Uh, I haven't gotten to the point where I don't know whether I need to do that or not. Uh, I might know in a few minutes when I try to put the rotor on there and realize that there's just too much. I might be okay um, from what I can see. So we'll go from there. So I think I got everything explained for that. The next step is to um, hopefully actually get the disc stuff together. Um, and um, hopefully it goes a lot easier than trying to put together the, the parking brake. The big deal with the parking brake is because you have this hub, axle, or whatever you want to call it. See where the uh, uh, lug nut studs are there, the wheel studs, whatever you call them, are through there. It's just so big, and you can see from here where it covers up everything back there. So if you got small fingers, hooray. You do have the holes in the hub there. They're not... They're not great. I, I didn't use them. I've got pretty big fingers. Um, just did it like that and with a pair of um, uh, long needle nose. Another thing, another tool I highly recommend. Um, that helps.
So, um, I'm not sure if I'm even going to... Uh, we're on day number two now. Uh, after the whole O-ring thing, I was like, I'm done. And it was kind of late. Um, the O-ring on this side did not tear. So I was like, well, let me get this done so that when I can get the other O-ring, um, at least I've learned, or at least figured things out and can move forward, hopefully faster on the other side. That's, um, we'll see. Uh, it is literally, now I have been screwing around, been drinking beer. Um, I went off and did some other stuff. My wife has come out here and talked to me a few times. Um, so I've screwed around, but this is just to get this one side together has probably taken me uh, at least an hour. Now, I don't claim to be the best mechanic in the world, but uh, that's just where I, where I stood on it. Um, and, and in all honesty, I, I think at one point when my wife is asking me why I do this to myself, um, while I was putting together this stuff, she said, why do you do this? I said, well, putting together this makes me realize why I'm changing over to the disc. I just, I hate drum brakes. Um, if there's a performance improvement, that's just great. The brakes on this truck are not the greatest in the world. I will say that the braided brake lines did make a good uh, a good difference in these uh, in the brake performance. At least the feel, I don't know about performance. Um, but I can tell you right now, I don't want to be sitting here every, how many ever, you know, tens of thousands of miles doing drum brakes behind this thing. And uh, after taking the OEM ones apart, Oh, hell no. Uh, there was way more pieces, way more garbage to go there. There are three springs in this. Uh, the adjuster. And the, well, if you, okay, there are three springs if you don't include the hold down pins. And that's it. Um, it's simpler. All right, so let's keep your fingers crossed. Um, I've been talking for 10 minutes, which is probably the longest. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not... Um, like showing this step by step, there's probably a really good thing on this step. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have some kind of skills and you've done brakes before. And um, the picture that the kit comes with does come in handy. Um, you can find it online on a couple of the forums. Uh, it actually is not uh, what's his name from SOS Performances, it's somebody else's. Don't forget to put lube on the backing plate, which I just realized I did. So I'm going to um, put some on there, some anti-seize or whatever. Um, I don't know. On a parking brake, I don't know that it will make much of a difference. Because you're not, you know, you're just using them when you park. You're not using them like a drum brake, where every time you hit the brakes, uh, the brakes work. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do it anyway. I put them on, on the back shoe. I didn't do it on the front shoe because I was um, busy cussing. Alright, so let me do that and make a decision if I'm even going to start doing the, uh, the, the rest of the stuff today or what. Stay tuned. Look at that. All in there finally. Um, pretty straightforward from here. Um, when we left, I had all the parking brake stuff on there. Uh, you're going to have to adjust the parking brake using the star adjuster until the shoes um, uh, just drag onto the, uh, the, the braking surface inside the hat there. Um, still don't know about adjusting the parking brake. Um, I haven't had to do it to put it back together. I don't know what it's going to be like after I get the other side, but there still may be some adjustment under there if there's a Y thing or under the uh, center console. Sorry, I see dripping. Uh, either way, I don't think that's my brake line. Look. Either way, we'll figure it out. Uh, nothing major on getting the rotor. You know, rotor just pops on. The caliper and hanging bracket. No different than anything else. Um, you're gonna have to play with the line a little bit. I don't, I, there's a picture in the instructions, and I can't really get this very well, can I? But maybe you can see it. Oh, I know it's leaking. Um, the, the bolt I forgot to tighten up. Anyway, oh, well, that's good. Self bleeding. Alright, you see the bend in the brake line there that we had to do. Uh, I had that brake line bender thing, it's way too big to fit back in there. 
Uh, so what I did was I used a socket um, to put inside the bend. I just used my hands to bend it around the socket. I'm not recommending you do it, but you can, maybe. Um, if you've done brake and lines, you'll see this little horseshoe clip right there. There's nothing in the kit. Um, I did determine that the OEM ones do work. Uh, you can see them right there. Those do work. Uh, I went to AutoZone and I found these at Advance. Um, unfortunately, not the part number, but I know I pulled them. Uh, it came up under a 2001 Camry. They mostly work. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, the disc part of it, it's straightforward, man. It's it's no different than uh, doing a rotor or anything else. Or, you know, pads and all that stuff. Just be sure you lube where you need to lube up. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but honestly, I don't know what. Um, the bolts in the back, uh, the... Let me look. 17 and 19s. So there you go, easy. Um, this side's done, man. Uh, well, except for bleeding. I'm gonna wait until I get the other side done to do it. Um, not even sure if I'm gonna go through bleeding. If you are doing this, you've bled brakes before and you have your own method, whether it's the two-person method or the you know the motive bleeder or the speed bleeders or I mean, I've got an air-powered. Um, I think it's made by a Mighty Vac bleeder that I really like. Um, you know, do the passenger side first, do the driver's side, get all the air out of the lines, adjust the parking brake if you need to, and should be done. I don't think I'll be doing the master cylinder, um, the conversion over, uh, well, definitely not this weekend. This weekend's over. Um, I still gotta wait for the O-ring. And uh, the other side will be crack a lacking. So, good luck. Okay, uh, next up. Sorry, can I get rid of the light? Um, going through there, see that little uh, uh, sh threaded rod there in the nut? That's adjusting the parking brake. Uh, it does need to be done. That's the only place you can adjust it. Um, I did about six clicks up until it held the wheel and then released it and made sure it released the wheel and uh, it was good to go. I used um, one of those like pass-through ratchet and socket set things. I think I got it from Home Depot. I've only used it like three or four times. Um, it's come in handy. So uh, yeah, that's that's that. I think I'm good on the emergency brake part. So getting ready to bleed. Oh, and um, to take this center console piece off, it's not that hard. Basically, just that uh, mine's automatic. Obviously, you just um, kind of pull down on that little chrome ring and that separates it from the shift knob, unscrew the shift knob, and then you're pulling up. It does go up, you see, on the top there. It looks like I uh, got a little clip in there. Anyway, that's the way it does it, and it, it's pretty easy. You know, you're going to have to pull the emergency brake um, boot over top, and that's good. So let's get the bleeding. All right, so a few things to finish this out. Here's the part number for the O-ring that goes on the axle tube. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that little thing held me up. Um, just in case, I vaguely remember having a heck of a time trying to find it on the um, parts breakdown, so I'll save you guys some time if it happens. As you can see, I'm moving around. Um, all right, part of the instructions was to clock the axle uh, forward so that you can see the ABS sensor there to the right. Um, so that it's sitting there, otherwise it'll uh, hit the caliper. The other, this is the passenger side, the driver's side is fine. Um, and so because of that, you're going to have to re... I don't, I don't necessarily want to say reroute, but um, you, you just kind of take all those clips out. You can, you can kind of see there's a dark green one there, um, kind of underneath the, the light green sticker that's on the uh, wire. Um, Take out all the clips, that'll give you a little slack, and then leave it like that for a second. And then you see that kind of weather stripping thing that's going up? That is actually holding both the wires uh, from the two sides. Um, and uh, the wires themselves are held into that bracket there with wire ties. You can kind of see the white one there. 
right? Um, take it all out of that, you know, cut the wire ties and whatnot. You can trim down that little weather stripping cover, uh, like cover, and then I'll give you a little more more. And then the last piece, I don't think I'm gonna do it, but I can kind of see it, I guess. Anyway, the wire runs up to a plug. You can kind of see it there. And it's on a metal bracket. You can actually bend that bracket down, and I'll give you uh, exactly what you need. Um, so there's no cutting, no splicing, no nothing. And uh, so that's that. Um, I'm just about done. I had a line that was leaking. I uh, just got it on. I need help bleeding the brakes. Um, I've been having problems with the brake bleeding. I'm like... I get a solid pedal when the truck's off, but as soon as I turn it on, it just it just kind of goes to the floor. From what I can tell, the back brakes uh, need to be bled a little different from traditional, so I need a second person for that. Um, and I'm it. I'm the only one here. Uh, I'll wait till tomorrow. I will make a video on the brake bleeding because that was another thing I had a hard time finding too. Um, at least talking about it. Um, I doubt I'm going to do it tonight. And man, I hope. I hope I'm done. This has been um, a production, to say the least. Between the O-ring and having to get that, and then the line leaking, and now the brake bleeding. But, I mean, as you can see, everything's together. I mean, for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the kit. You know, I, I wish I didn't have to make a video for the, the crappy instructions. Um, I'm not going to do the uh, master cylinder. Um, just maybe like I don't know in a week or two and I, I will make a video on that that's pretty straightforward but I uh, will run through it so uh, this is it for this this little hitch and I will talk to you when we get to the bleeding We're forward progress all right everyone so I guess this is gonna be my last video for right now as far as the brakes are concerned Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I was just holding off to where I could bleed them and everything. I think I'm still having problems bleeding, so I'm just going to say um, from what I could find online, some people were okay bleeding the brakes normally. Some people uh, had success in, there's like a manual method where you can you can get the, I guess it's the ABS pump to, to cycle um, to help push the air through. Um, I had zero luck with that, or if I did, I couldn't hear the pump come on, I don't know. Um, and then the third, um, and this is all pertaining to the back brakes apparently. The front brakes you can you can uh, bleed normally, it's the back brakes that cause the problems. Uh, and this is an issue that I had when I did the uh, stainless steel brake lines. Um, I, don't, I guess I never found a solution. I never really noticed it after a while. Let's see if we can not get killed here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the third solution is um, to find uh, an OB, OBD2 scanner that can uh, do the auto bleed. Um, for the pump, which I did. I found one uh, made by Autel. Uh, the price wasn't too hateful. I think it was 150 bucks. Um, it cycled the pump. You can definitely hear it. It's extremely loud, but I just I had no luck getting any additional air out of the lines. So, where I stand now is I'm driving it, obviously, and I have brakes. I just if I sit on the pedal at a light like right here, it'll it'll drop to the floor. Um, no, I won't do it now. Uh, but with the ignition off in the in the truck, uh, the pedals rock hard. And there's, as far as I can tell, there are no there's no air in the lines. I went through like half a quarter. I went through probably a quarter brake fluid bleeding these things, and um, still could not. So where I stand right now is. Uh, I still have the master cylinder to do, which is going to require another bleed. Um, so I'm going to do that and then go from there. If I have to, I will take it into the dealership and uh, let them use their proprietary, what is it, the TIS or TechStream, or maybe that's all the same thing, I don't know, um, and go from there. 
that. Now, where does that leave you as someone who wants to to perform this conversion? I don't know, man. Um, I don't want to make any uh, assertions that could hurt you. So I, I guess I just I'll let you do your best judgment, and you know, hey, you might get lucky. You might get the, a normal bleed and be good. I mean. Uh, theoretically, you shouldn't have to bleed the ABS pump. So maybe it's something I did previously. So, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could help you, man. Um, so this is it for the brakes. If you have any questions, post down below. Um, I am going to separate the master cylinder video. And... Um, that way if someone's just looking for that they can just you know you can just find that and then if I get a solution which I better get a solution to the bleeding problem uh, I will post something about that as well so good luck to you um, I, I'm not even going to comment on performance right now because honestly they feel uh, real close to the drum rears um, I, don't, I don't expect I did not expect any significant improvement and even with the master, the, the, the other master cylinder on there, I still don't. Um, I, I wanted this for ease of replacement, um, ease of maintenance, you know, whatever that might be. Um, and I, I feel like I achieved that. Um, even if I have to replace the, uh, the shoes uh, for the, uh, the emergency brake, I, I still... It's still way easier than the drum brakes that were on the, the truck initially from the factory. Uh, those brakes had a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's hard to see those moving parts because of the way the hub is built. Um, you would, you can see that in the video. And um, I have a much, I don't know, I, and I probably could have done this in the drum brakes, but my emergency brake is way better too. Um, I had, yeah, those things were not fun to adjust. But at any rate, um, that's it. Again, if you guys have questions, um, just just post below. I'm pretty good about getting back. Um, do I recommend this or don't I recommend this? I don't know yet. I'm in. I mean, up in the air right now. Um, if anyone else has done this and wants to chime in, by all means, do so. So. From, uh, if you haven't figured it out, from our nation's capital, I'm out of here. <laughs>